Like humans, these macaques have evolved in highly complex societies. Adapted to a wide variety of habitats, these have learned to swim for shellfish. As with most primates, grooming reinforces the bonds that give these macaques a sense of security within their group. The jungles of Central and South America are home to the monkeys of the New World. These rainforests contain more primate species than anywhere else on Earth. Dawn breaks and howler monkeys announce their presence to the world. Their calls are among the loudest of any animal, so striking that according to British explorer Henry Walter Bates, they sounded like a chorus of leopards. But despite the racket, howlers are remarkably docile. Their calls are simply meant to avoid conflicts with rival howler groups. Howlers have spread across a larger region than any of the New World monkeys, and today they are found in three major areas the black howler in Central America, the red howler in Venezuela, and the brown howler in Southeast Brazil. All possess characteristics that have allowed howlers to thrive. A prehensile tail with bare skin along the inside edge is used to grip branches. And their broad, flat teeth are specially adapted for eating leaves. It is their ability to eat a wide variety of leaves that permits howlers to occupy such an extensive range. Because leaves are so hard to digest, these howlers who have gorged themselves all morning must now rest for most of the day while the leaves are slowly digested. The largest of the New World monkeys, Muraki, spend almost all of their lives in the trees. With prehensile tails like the howlers, they feed on tender leaves, flower petals, 
and fruit high in the canopy of Brazil's Atlantic coastal forest. Muraki can weigh up to 30 pounds and must be careful where they jump. Some die when they misjudge the strength of a branch. Muraki move swiftly between trees, creating their own highway through the forest. And as they move, they vary their diet, allowing time for the vegetation to regrow. This one's sloppy eating habits play a vital role in spreading food and seeds to the forest floor. Muraki are true brachiators with specially adapted shoulder joints that allow them to swing rapidly from limb to limb. Under normal conditions, these Muraki live in what could be considered a utopian society. Too big to fall prey to marauding hawks, and provided with a year-round supply of their favorite foods, they spend much of their time relaxing in the treetops. About a thousand miles to the north, a misty flooded forest of the Amazon basin is home to a variety of unique creatures. Each animal has adapted to this environment in its own way. Among the animals here is one of the oddest of all monkeys. It is the red wakari, known in local legend as the demon of the forest.
It has adapted to its flooded forest habitat by becoming one of the champion nutcrackers of the world, exploiting a food source common to this area. Like the bill of a macaw, the wakari's upper teeth overhang the lower, permitting it to strip the shells from tough skin nuts and tree bark. North of the Amazon basin, the open woodland is dotted with seasonal lakes and ponds. Oases like these are an essential source of water, attracting a wide variety of wildlife. These capuchins would prefer to drink in peace, but a predator is on the prowl. This time, the caiman settles for an eel. Deeper in the forest, a troop of squirrel monkeys scampers for food. Commonly known as the spirits of the forest, these monkeys travel in large troops for protection and to cover a greater area in search of food. Squirrel monkeys have sharp, narrow teeth, well adapted for crushing insects and biting into tough skin fruit. Unlike the Murakian howlers, these monkeys do not have prehensile tails, so they've become agile on their feet. They're great leapers. And they act swiftly when an intruder is spotted.
best known for their role as organ grinder monkeys in circus sideshows, capuchins are extremely intelligent, with the largest relative brain size of any monkey. Here in the wild, their intelligence has made them experts at knowing when fruiting and flowering trees are at their peak, tempting other primates to follow them to food. But today, this capuchin enjoys his meal all by himself. A full moon awakens the creatures of the night. Among the creatures here is this owl monkey, the only truly nocturnal monkey. Like the owl, it has evolved enormous light-gathering eyes that allow it to see even on moonless nights. Daylight brings one of the smallest monkeys out of its nighttime slumber. Marmosets are among the most diverse and colorful of the New World monkeys. They have claws instead of nails and sharp teeth to feed on the gums of trees, rich in protein and carbohydrates. Unlike the seasonal vegetation most monkeys must rely on, the gum is a constant, available all year long. But this one can't pass up the opportunity for a high-protein treat. The pygmy marmoset is the world's smallest monkey, about the size of a human hand. Like the other marmosets, its primary food is plant gum, but this one will not hesitate to tackle a katydid almost as big as its head.
Tamarins are a close kin of the marmosets, and these golden lion tamarins are among the most elegant and endangered of all primates. They live in extended family groups where fathers carry the infants after their first week of life. Golden lion tamarins will eat almost anything they can find, using their long hands and fingers to gather fruit and probe for insects in the bowls of bromeliads. Because they are relatively small and live high in the forest canopy, they are in constant peril from hawks. Their high-pitched calls alert the group to take cover. When the threat is gone, the monkeys huddle together, making sure everyone's safe and affirming the bonds between them. Although this immediate danger has passed, the real threat is not the hawk. Primates have survived for millions of years by skillfully adapting to change. But today, we have pushed our primate cousins to the edges of their natural habitats, leaving them no time to adapt. And though our pasts may be linked, it is now we who control the fate of our closest relatives.